Normal eating is being able to eat when you are hungry and eating until you are satisfied. It is being able to use moderate constraint on your food selection to get the right food, but not being so restrictive that you miss out on pleasurable food, and giving yourself permission to eat sometimes because you are happy, sad, or bored, or just because it feels good. Normal eating is overeating at times and undereating at others. It means trusting your body to make up for your mistakes in eating. Okay, I have orthorexia, which is an eating disorder that um, centers around extreme healthy eating, and so when I go to choose food, I'm really concerned with um, like the nutrition that's involved. I eat a lot of fruits and vegetables, a lot of nuts and a lot of beans, um, lean meat. Uh, I don't I don't really eat many carbs at all. I will go like weeks without eating carbs. Um, no fried food, nothing processed. I use exercise as a way to like purge my body um, in a way to like, get rid of like all the food I've been eating. I recognize that like a lot of people who have eating disorders don't look like skeletons and a lot of people who the two people that I've like been closest with who also have eating disorders are heavier than me and so eating disorders don't always look the same and it is hard to sometimes say like I have an eating disorder but like I look just like everyone else that I'm hanging out with. Oftentimes, women with disordered eating habits will never recognize their sicknesses because they cannot be labeled as anorexia or bulimia. I know in my family we did uh, the South Beach diet, which isn't as extreme, but like for the first two weeks you literally don't eat any sugar at all, like nothing, no carbs at all. So for those first two weeks it's basically like you're losing water weight. So Your whole yeah. family did this? Yeah, or we tried. But I don't, it wasn't very successful because after like the first three weeks, it was just like, ugh, much sugar. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The tricky thing with fad diets is that I think the, the main reason why most of them don't work is because it's not sustainable. And so people aren't, you're not getting used to a diet that you can maintain. So if you cut out something, like you cut out carbs completely, like you can't do that for the rest of your life. And so then people tend to swing more the other direction. Yeah, actually where I work in a doctor's office and a lot of it's especially uh, like evident with females. They have that issue all the time. Like I'm typing their notes and it's like lost 15 pounds in a month and then it's like gained 27 pounds in two months. And it's like, it just, it fluctuates so much. But when they lose, they end up usually gaining more than they lost. Yeah. To learn more about some of these dieting trends and how they have changed and affected women over the years, we asked our moms about their relationships with eating. Well, for me, it was just part of our life. My mother was always on a diet. She wasn't fat. She was a little bit heavy, and it seemed like Weight Watchers was her diet of choice. So mm -hmm. I remember the scales in our kitchen, her weighing the food, mm -hmm. and she was always, always, always on a diet. She was starting another Weight Watchers program, mm -hmm. always. Yeah, my mom too, and as a matter of fact, my mom still wrestles with her weight and is always talking about how fat she is. And um, I remember her saying to me that when I was in high school that I had to do something about my weight. Their value is internal, their identity is not a number, it's not a size, and I wanted them to know that. Books, tell us about books. Well, this is a good example of how you end up turning into your mother, which no daughter ever thinks she's going to turn into her mother, but they always think we to do, do that. Do. Um, and my mother passed last year, and I was able to um, get some of her things and found out that she had quite a passion for health books and nutrition books, so I brought those home. Haven't had a chance to go through all of them. Um, so. A lot of these hardback ones are hers, but really reading about nutrition and health is really just a passion of mine, um, a hobby of mine. Mm -hmm. um, everybody has their thing, and kind of food and nutrition is mine. So I'm noticing that some of these are like diet books. Do you ever do like the diets that are in them, or just read about them? I have. I did the Daniel Fast with my church. Mm -hmm. um, right now, my thing that I'm, my kick is paleo, mm -hmm. so I'm doing that. I've done Atkins before. So, you know, periodically, a lot of the books kind of repeat the same thing, but just in a little bit of a different way. Um, but, but yeah, I just like to stay current because things have changed, you mm -hmm. know. Eggs used to be bad, now they're good, and milk's bad, milk good. So it's interesting how things change over time.
technically running to lose weight and eating technically nutritious foods to lose weight. That's what you're supposed to do. Yeah. Technically. But I've just taken it to an extreme. Right. But haven't a lot of other women? Yeah. So could you say that there are a lot of women in this country who have undiagnosed eating disorders? I would say, yeah, as a culture, we abuse food and we abuse, like, the way we treat food. Because it's not even a disorder anymore. It's just, it's almost the norm for yeah. women. At that point, like, as it's illustrated there, like, that's starvation. And your body isn't designed to, and so you die without nutrients. Everybody knows who Julianne Huff is, right? The dancer, she's in that one really bad Nicholas Sparks movie. She, uh... <laughs> The dimensions of the emaciated body are very similar to the dimensions of her body. And we, she is a symbol of health and beauty in our country. Yeah. Is it normal for women <laughs> to feel negatively about themselves? Okay. Or? Well, in this society, sadly, it kind of is normal because everybody has that one mindset of what they should look like. And honestly, nobody looks like that. Nobody is size negative five. And everybody just feels bad that they don't look like the models in the magazine. My name is Rocio. My name is Lauren. My name is Kristen. My name is Sarah. My name is Camille. My name is Chelsea. My name is Jordan. I wish I were more confident. I wish I were confident. I wish I were kinder to myself. I wish I were a little bit taller. I wish I were a baller. I wish I had a girl who looked good, I would call her. I wish I had a rabbit and a hat and a bat and a 64 Impala. I wish I were Robin Shabosky. I wish I were better at sports. I wish I were better at holding conversations. I have tried to starve myself, but I only lasted for a few hours. I have obsessively counted calories, measured myself, exercised to the point of pain, and starved myself. I have hated my body and tried to change it through diet and exercise. I have tried Atkins, but it was too much math, and then I binged on Nutella. I have not eaten for several days because I had no appetite. I have pretended not to care about how I look, although I definitely do. I have tried to be gluten-free for a few days. More than 10 million Americans struggle with diagnosed eating disorders, but a larger number have disordered eating and exercise habits that will never be recognized or treated. I'll give them heroics. I'll give them the most spectacular heroics anyone's ever seen. And when I'm old and I've had my fun, I'll sell my inventions so that everyone can be superheroes. Everyone can be super. And when everyone's super, <laughs> no one will be. I am 160 pounds. I am 140 pounds. I am 162 pounds. I am 136 pounds. I am 150 pounds. I am 140 pounds. I am 125 pounds. I am a nurturer. I'm a good friend. I am strong. I am a writer. I follow Jesus. I am a mom, friend, and wife. I am an overachiever. How I feel about my appearance impacts how I perform during my day. Is it, was that super comp no, confusing? No, it makes, it makes sense to me. It's just, it seems like we don't even realize how much other people's opinions influence how we feel about ourselves. No, really, our, our opinion of ourselves is a construction of how we perceive other yeah. people perceive us. It's not even how other people really feel about how it's we It's just look. how we, we think, think they we feel. We think that that pressure is more than what it is. We think that we're expected to look the way that people look at TV, people, like, these people, we all idolize, we expect to look that way, and we expect people to expect us to live up to that standard, but in reality, no one actually thinks that. Well, and I, I was watching everybody as everybody came in this morning, and um, I think none of us in the room look like people that are in the movies that are or that are on TV, but I was just looking at everybody, and... I don't know if you selected the most beautiful girls in your school, but really, if you look at each other, look at your facial features and your eye color. I mean, you're all just gorgeous, and I bet you don't feel that way.